Bonjour! Welcome back to me knitting the ram in French. Last time you saw me knit the limbs, and this time we're going to tackle some more of the other body parts. So I have a bit of a situation brewing right now. Uh, I've entered into a game of yarn chicken. For those of you who are unaware, yarn chicken is when you want to knit something but you're not sure if you have enough yarn to finish it with that skein or if the project's going to run out before if the skein's going to run out before you finish the project. So this is what I have left of the cream. Which I mean it looks like a decent amount until you realize with the plan I have for the ram here I started with the limbs. My part was also to get a little bit of the behind, the face, and the ears. I'm not sure I'm going to get all that from here. So part of winning yarn chicken is making it look intentional. And I only have the one skein of the cream. Because I thought like, oh, I'll just buy one skein. It should take care of the different percentages. Well, if you look at the ram here. You need at least three different shades for the hair, the horn, and the ears. So they have to be three different colors. So I got three different colors for the ram. I have this slightly tanner one and this dark brown. And my original plan was for the dark brown to be the horns and nothing else. And my plan was also to use this for the decoration body. But now it's looking like if I run out of this, the easiest yarn to go into would be the yarn that I planned for the horn because I wasn't planning on using it for anything else. But I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take the plans I have for these two skeins and switch them. So this is going to be my horns now and this is going to be all the furry thing. And I want to only have one skein of yarn for like the different like furry yarn because I don't know how much yarn that's going to eat up. So we're going to make this the body hair, and we're going to make this the horn, and if I need to, I can turn it into the face and the bottom. And I think I'm going to be happier with that color scheme. Especially since I know, since it's three different colors here, and like the horn and the, since these two are taking care of the horn and whatnot, this has to take care of the ears. So I need to make sure that this provides me at least enough for the ears. So I think I'm going to try the ears next. Also, I recall there was like a video in the past where I said it's better just start with um, like the bigger part and then go back into the smaller parts because it seems like you're making more progress. Yeah, I'm totally uh, a hypocrite right now. <laughs> um, Simply because I want to get used to the French. The good news is I am more used to the French now. I have a better understanding of what the instructions are telling me to do. So I feel less overwhelmed. So I think I'm going to start with an ear. We'll see how much yarn that takes up. And then when it comes to the face and that, we just might go straight into this. And that will be less of a jarring color combination. Even though it means this will have the more difficult stitches. Harder to do more difficult stitches with darker yarn because it's hard to see, but I think it'll be worth it. So, that out of the way. Let's work on the ears, which looks like Aurelis. And I'm supposed to make two. Obviously, like I did for the limbs, I'm only going to make one ear in front of you because... I mean, you're watching a YouTube video. You have the ability to pause and rewind and... If you're following along this as a tutorial, which I do not recommend. <laughs> uh, this is not a tutorial, folks. <laughs> this is commentary. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's still so much like yarn. Although the good news is I think once I'm like done the ears, we can move away from the cream, which is one of the most boring colors in existence. It's like... A color that you need, but not necessarily a color that you like, right? It's like, it's a nice color, but it's so boring. 
if you do a lot of it after a while. You want an interesting color. You get blue and green, purple and orange. All those other colors that are not brown. <laughs> or black and white, which are technically are not colors, but are shades. How many am I supposed to cast on here? 14. Okay. I haven't even counted how many stitches are on this needle yet. I just know like visually that I have less than 14 and I should probably count at some point, but I also know I haven't hit that limit yet. Maybe I should count now. So I got four, eight, 11. See? Now I know I just need to do three more. Two. Three. Okay, so this has the same instruction. Oh, all the different parts have that same instruction, it looks like, where it's like, you're starting on the wrong side. It's nice when you like make something from a book and then you go along and it's like, oh, I understand this instruction now. It's like, we're, you know this one thing you did? We're gonna do the other thing the same. So now, two is we have some increases. So I stitch five, one, two, three, four, five. And then I do one and increase three times. So that's one, two, three, oh, and then I just knit to the end. Sweet. Simple enough. And it just wants me to do four, oh, five rounds. There's a special instruction here. Oh. Oh. It tells me to do three rounds in Jersey End, which so far has been the French instruction for do this in stockinette. But it's like, yeah, I know how to do stockinette. I know how to knit. <laughs> Granted, I didn't know how to do stockinette for a long, long time, but I know how to do it now. I was much younger then. Wait, is that, if that goes that way. There you go.
that's just straight up knitting and purling. I mean, nothing you guys haven't seen before. <laughs> You know, I kind of get self-conscious at times when I'm using metal needles and I hear them clicking against each other because they make a lot of noise, but it's actually kind of soothing noise, isn't it? Most of the time I don't really hear it anyway because I'm watching TV and if I'm doing it right, the sound of the TV drowns out the needles. It's weird, I also cut my nails recently and it's like a reminder of like, when you have longer nails, you, like I end up using the nails as tools and like I end up using it to grab the yarn sometimes, but now it's like the needle is trying to slide under the nail and it can't because there's no nail to slide under. <laughs> and we're not gonna force it because that would be painful. Oh man, I remember working handicraft. It was my first year working at handicraft and some kid shoved a needle under his nail. And, oh, I never want to hear that level of scream again. <sighs> Nor do I want to experience it for myself. Ugh. All right, so now we had the seven rows. So now, Okay, you have a decrease row here. So it's one, two, three. Then I decrease normally. And then I do the slip over, purl, then slip back. I forget what it's called in English. It's like mentally, I just think of um, the abbreviation in English when I think of this in my head because that's simpler, even though that's not really a pronounceable set of letters either. It's like scapo. <laughs> uh. Like here in French, that abbreviation is GGE. It's like G. Yeah, I decrease normally. At least I'm assuming that's what that means. It would make sense if that's what that means.
So now with the tenth row, ah, so I do the one, and then I do the two, a decrease, a special decrease. I do that two times. Decrease, special decrease. And then this is the last row that has me do any decreases. And I've never seen that abbreviation before, at least in this book. See, I have nine, yeah? So if I do one on each side, ah! Maybe I haven't seen that abbreviation, I just didn't recognize that. Let me see what it says in the book. I think it wants me to decrease three stitches at once. Yeah, it wants me to decrease three stitches at once. Okay. As long as we understand, it's all good. You can throw words I don't know yet. I got a brain that can learn. <laughs> um. Yeah, so it's kind of like a combination of both, yeah? So I like slide this over. I decrease. Then I slide that other stitch back on top. And woo, that's a lot going on with that particular stitch. And then we do 13, but just as the row they do to say like, hey, we're gonna have a breather. Give you a little bit of a chance to catch up from what we just did to you last row. All right. And with that, it doesn't want me to cast off. It wants me to do the same thing it did with the arms where it's like, Cut a long piece of yarn on a yarn we're playing yarn chicken with. <laughs> and just thread it through. The needle and just pull it tight that way and let it do its thing. Now, once we make two ears, I think I'm gonna make the second ear later. I think I'm just going to embrace this game of yarn chicken and just accept the fact that the ram is going to have a slightly browner butt, which doesn't really matter because I'm making pants for him anyway. So even if I somehow conceivably win and get to make the face with the cream, um, I, ooh, there we go. <laughs> you know, I could have just found that for the cream, just like, there are two parts to every skein, yeah? There's the one part that's on the outside, and if you reach to inside, you can pull out the yarn, and that way it just collapses in on itself, and it doesn't move around. The only thing is, if you want to like 
put it back together is not very helpful but it's great for like when you're rolling a ball into yarn and you don't want the skein to go everywhere anyway uh i think i still had the plan of doing the body before the head so that way if i mess up on the little like furry parts um Yeah, if I miss, wait, let me try not to do two things at once. All right. I'm all, I was also trying to fix this at the same time and think and blah, blah, blah. it wasn't working. Anyway, I think if I do the body before I do the head, when it comes to like the little like popcorny things that pop out, if I make a mistake with it, the mistakes are going to happen when I first do it. And if I do it at the bottom of the body, which I believe the instructions start with the bottom and go up with the body they'll be hidden my clothes because I'm making clothes for the ram if I were to make them on the head and then I start with the head and then the mistakes happen that way it'd be a glaring obvious mistake maybe but we're gonna err on the side here so with the core the body Use the same needles in color B, um, or the color that I decide. We're going to put on eight stitches, and then it wants me to do the same as the regular body for core uni. So, if you remember in the very first part of the series, I mentioned how. Um, like the way this book does it is they have three basic body shapes and then the animal follows one of the basic body shapes and you just follow the one that works. It all kind of just goes from there. So I kind of have to follow that for this guy. She's back to the beginning of the book. And the first 15 stitches are, well, not just stitches, the first 15 rows are exactly the same. And I imagine when I get to here, it doesn't say switch the color. I imagine that's when the color switches. Unless, oh, you had a slightly browner butt anyway. Wait, that's not separate. I thought that was separate. Oh. I opened the wrong skein. Turns out the butt is not a separate color from the rest of the body. So we're going to start with this. The brown, which... So nice not to be working in white. <laughs> okay. Like in my head is playing the laugh of Mary Poppins. The ha 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 it, It's like that part of the original Mary Poppins. The one with Julie Andrews. Not the equally good remake by Emily Blunt. Where um. Ah. Uh, She's opening up the carpet bag in front of Jane and Michael for the first time and she like is pulling inside and I think that laugh comes right when uh, she finds the tape measure that she's going to measure Jane and Michael with. But it's not an ordinary tape measure. It's a tape measure that tells her about their personalities. And apparently everyone else that is Mary Poppins height is practically perfect in every way. So we have eight. All right. 
So now we're going to go back to that other section of the book. <laughs> if you heard like that paper, um, like just now, in order to make sure that I'm looking at the right part of the camera, <laughs> I cover the viewfinder with like a sheet of paper. This is the sheet of paper. <laughs> Very cheap, I know. <laughs> but otherwise, that's how you get videos of me like looking off screen instead of like looking straight at you. <laughs> because if I see a picture of myself, I mean, I'm filming this on an iPad yet. Yeah? If I see a picture of myself, I'm going to look at me. I'm a very attractive person. I'm a very good person to look at. All right. <laughs> but then it doesn't look right on the camera if I'm looking at myself while I'm filming. So the paper is prevent myself looking at myself, essentially. <laughs> anyway, it wants me to furl the first row. Another similarity I have with Mary Poppins, like, um, they don't really emphasize it in the movie so much, but I was also a big fan of the Mary Poppins books. And, uh, um, one of the things that Mary Poppins does that they, the book mentioned several times is she will look at herself at any reflective surface that, uh, walks by. What is that instruction? I don't understand. <laughs> we have come across a French fab. Anyway, just to finish my thought about Mary Poppins, um, she will look at every reflection of herself as she walks by. And she doesn't see what, like if it's a window, she doesn't see like the thing behind the window like people normally do. She just looks at herself. Anyway, she's portrayed as, she's portrayed as quite vain in the books. <laughs> uh, so the word I'm looking at is J-U-S-Q-U apostrophe A with a backwards accent. Don't think that's an abbreviation, but we will look. It is not. Okay. So it wants me to do one stitch, increase one, then just qua one stitch do board. In one stitch. I don't understand what that means. <laughs> the board. And is that particular instruction? It's in every other odd row. Well, I can't look it up. So, see, I have eight here. I have eight here. I'm supposed to end with 15. So, if I understand the math correctly, it looks like I'm supposed to add a stitch in between every one. Like, if I were to add a stitch in every blank area, between every solid stitch that would add seven stitches and that would leave me with 15. We're going to do that. So and you might just heard my body just growl or whatnot. The body decided to body. 
can't help it if I'm human. came close to splitting that yarn there. I don't want to split that particular strand of yarn, please. Okay. There we go. And that should be 15, yeah. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, yes, yes. So, I'm just going to completely ignore that phrase because I was able to get the intended end result um, without it and hope that it doesn't come to bite me in the butt later, <laughs> which is very apt because I'm working on the butt. <laughs> Anyway, the rest of this literally looks like I'm just increasing up until the very end. So I'm going to come back when I finish this part of the body that uh, is relatively simple. It's just going to be me increasing until I have a particular amount of stitches on. And then hopefully when we go back um, or when I come back. Uh, we will be on a part where something fun will happen. We'll be back to the actual pattern anyway. I'll be back. I have my 15 uh, rows. So now I'm back to the main page to see what is different. And I already see some uh, instructions that look a little bit different. So it looks like Huh. <laughs> it looks like I'm only increasing three stitches in the next row. But I, they're forcing me to count to 16. Like, why? <laughs> okay. Because they are. Okay. So I got one, two... It's already, like, from how fast they had me increase, you see how much it's, like, buckling under me just to have it out like that? I have to bring it closer together so it's not, like, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then increase one, which actually follows the pattern. I am impressed. That's why they had me do 16. And, oh, I see why they show 16 now. Because it divides relatively evenly to the amount that I have. So I don't really have to count now. I just got to. No, I still have to count. <laughs> uh, so much for that fantasy. Okay, that was three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now I... Wait. No, I still have to count. Okay. One, two, 
three. I was about to say like, oh, I can just knit to the last stitch, but I can't because there's three parts and not two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Now I can just knit to the end. I don't have to worry about counting. the next row I actually have to do something the next row what <laughs> that's weird okay I actually have to do something on a pearl row Ooh. as I pull out enough yarn so it wants me to do 18 pearl yeah these dance of pearl yeah let me just double check the abbreviation page Oh, part of the book, the book is starting to fall apart. Uh-oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he is pearl, he is knit. Okay. So it's 18 pearl, 10 knit, 4 pearl, 10 knit, 18 pearl. Oh. Smart. There's a thing that says, like, um, I don't understand the beginning part. But the last part is la posesión de yambes, which is like this row is so you know where to put the legs. Ow. <laughs> okay. So one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So now I move the yarn. Do ten knit. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I do four pearl. Yeah, yeah. So one, two, three, four, then ten knit again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then it should just be 18 left. Yeah, 4, 8, 12, 16. Yeah. Let me just tell you how rare this row I just did was. Most places when it's like, hey, you got to put the limb at like round 16 or like whatnot. Like they tell you after the fact, like attach it here. They don't physically change the pattern like this just did in order to say like, hey, don't worry about the exact position. We'll give you a tactile guide for you to find it, which isn't going to matter because that's where you're going to sew it and it's going to get covered. So smart. Um, <laughs> because most of the time, I'm, I'm going to tell you, when someone tells me like, count, 
four rows down and then place the eyes. I'm not going to count. I'm just going to eyeball it. And wherever the eyes end up, the eyes end up. Same with the arms, same with the legs, same with anything else I have to attach. And this is like, no, we're just going to give you a little helpful guide to show you where it's going to be. Appreciate that so much. There's a new abbreviation. <sighs> one knit, then one BO. In English, that would be bind off. That, that's not the case here. I have to do this nine times. Where is my little abbreviation page? It does not say. <laughs> what? What's the point of having an abbreviation if you don't describe it? It's like an important part. Ah! <laughs> what? The abbreviation starts with B. In the list... It goes from A to s three to numbers and then C. That's where the B would have gone between A and C. In most languages. I assume French is not different in that regard. Does this explain? No. Maybe explains in the back. Is there like a little thing in the back? Montage. And I can't Google it. I gave myself that stupid rule. I can't Google it. <laughs> well, I can't Google Translate. But I also know Google understands that I'm an English speaker and they will translate everything into English for me. Which is why we're not trying. Now time for a really awkward question. Um, do they have a close-up of your butt? That is as close to your butt as it's going to get. <laughs> um... And it doesn't end with Let me take a closer look at what this is. That type of stitch, yeah? My guess would be they're asking me to do a yarn over, maybe? And they asked me to do it relatively repeatedly throughout the pattern. Oh, wait! Pour fair one bull! Mila is going to tell me. Monter 2 in Montage End. Fair page 118. Try quarter 
118. I don't know what page this is. That's 113, 14, 115. Yeah, once again, lost track of the page. 118. Okay. And montage end. Oh. So it wants me to add two stitches to the end and then knit them all together. Oh, okay, I get it now. So what it wants me to, so it's explaining like the top part of this right here, yeah? <clears throat> so what it wants me to do is it wants me to add two stitches and then we knit all three of them together, which is gonna leave us with a nice little sizable bump. Okay. <laughs> Have more of a sense. They explain the abbreviation. It's easier. Be good. So now, I do that nine times. Oh, and they leave a little bit for, uh, we're not doing that on top of um, where we left the little part for the legs. Okay. <laughs> so now, So now I increase by two, and then we knit all three together, and we have a little bump. We're going to do this nine times. So. I hope I'm I hope I'm doing this correctly, but also the yarn is really dark. So if I'm not doing it correctly, it doesn't really matter because it doesn't really look the same. It looks like I'm crocheting. <laughs> uh that looked closer. Let me try that again. Even though I kind of like I kind of liked how that looked better. Going to go messy, messy. Okay. Mm, it didn't really matter. Okay. Felt like that did nothing. That did even less than the other one. I like how the other one looked better. How did I do that? Okay, maybe I pulled it too tight. So. Or maybe I did it both from there. <laughs> And now we've done three stitches, all done very differently from one another. Oh, that's even worse. I'm getting worse. We're going to undo that one. That one is clearly not it. Oh my gosh. Did I just knot this? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. And it's dark, so I can't see it. Okay. I 
He grabbed like part of the string, but not all of it. There we go. Ooh. How did I do it the first time? No, I think I did it like this. And then I just did this. And yeah, I like that. Okay. That's how we're going to do it. Where am I? I did it three times. Okay. <laughs> so this is four. I do it in the middle there. And then I do that. Yeah. This is how we get the like look that we like. see because it's so dark I hope it gets better over time Like, part of me wants to go, like, maybe in French, like, maybe just put the amount of stitches in the bracket so you know how much you're working with. But if I was working on with English, that wouldn't be a concern that I have because I'd understand the instructions. <laughs> and it doesn't really seem fair to hold French to different standards than English, simply because I don't understand one language as much as the other. When it comes to pattern books. Yeah, I think I got one more. There we go. That's my little row of bobble so far, if you can even see it. I hope when there's like a ton of them, there will be more. But now I gotta do 10 stitches of just straight knit on top of where we did the pearl earlier. It's funny, like this bobble that we're creating and like the abbreviation is bull and like there's a yarn called like bully yarn, which basically has like those little bobbles in it. And we probably got that from French. <laughs> so we make two more of those things. It didn't come through. There you go. And then we do the 10 stitches of knit once again.
Okay. It's like a part where sometimes more the pattern just clicks. It's like it didn't make sense before, but now that you're actually working on it, you look forward and it's like, oh yeah, I understand more of this now. I just had one of those moments. There's like a lot of stuff stuck in that particular stitch. It's like, ugh. Okay. Is this the thing where, no. Oh yes, I end with just two stitches. Oh, so you don't end with the bouncy bounce, which will probably make it easier to sew. Smart, okay. I was thinking like, do the bouncy bounce was like a song lyric and it's like what's that song lyric from and now i'm realizing i'm he's probably not the original singer of it but i'm thinking weird al <laughs> i was listening to a lot of weird al last night so that is you can probably barely even see it can you that's our little bully roll there and 19 is just one speed of pearl And it looks like it just wants me to keep doing. So once I purl, then it's like I do the bully row, but I just do the bully row through the whole thing. And then it's just basically keep repeating those rows. Up until row 34. So I'm going to come back when there's a little bit more bully bully on our ram here. Here's the... Uh, Ram's body so far. I'm, I'm hoping the light contrast makes it a little bit easier to see than it is for me, but, well, it is easier for me to see before the light contrast, but I'm starting to get the bumpy bumps that I was expecting to get, which is good. Even though my knitting does seem to be a bit looser in parts now. because of how it's going, but now it wants me to start decreasing. It looks like once I start decreasing, it's different types of rows. And then lots of the instructions are like, repeat these rows, repeat these rows. So I've got the basic gist of what to go forward. It's just the decreasing that I haven't done yet. So I'm just going to be doing decrease row in front of you. And then, uh, then I'll go back to working on this but you can see made some lovely progress and you can see it's starting to bend where the actual animal is going to bend so the pattern is smart 
and since it's having me do the bumpy bumps on the knit side the right side it's having me do the decreases on the wrong side the side where we typically would just have the breather row just to get it done so now I'm seeing an abbreviation I haven't seen before but I can kind of understand what it stands for um, it's GGV, which V is the uh, French abbreviation for pearl, and the GGE was the slip, the skip one pearl, slip the stitch over stitch. So I'm guessing this is the pearl version of this, the GGV. So I just do one pearl. And then I do this type of stitch. Boom, we have our decrease. And then I do 14 purl. So one, two, three, four. You can kind of see how like it's starting to get a lot more space in between when I pull it together. I guess that's part of the reason for the purl things too it pulls it tighter together because otherwise it would just have like a bunch of open gaps and we don't really want the gaps we want the yarn pushing out where was i <laughs> um, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and then it wants me to do that decrease twice. So, we slip it over, we do the pearly pearl. Very rare do they have us do this for pearl. There you go. Then we slip it over, we do the pearly pearl. We slip it over again. Oop. We did that twice. It wants me to do 18. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is the part where it starts looking symmetrical again. So we do that pearl decrease. Click that and that pearl decrease again. I do 14. Pretty relatively simple, yeah. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, and then it leads me exactly where I want to be for one decrease, and one purl stitch. And then the next row tells me the same. Jaqua two stitches du board. And then 2E, which means I'm missing something here. Now that I'm doing the body, I can kind of see where the seam is in the picture. And the seam is going along the ram's back. It's not going along the ram's front because there's a disruption in the pattern. Also, the pattern's been having me... Um, shift 
the little bumpy bumps. So that way, um, if they look like they're going on a line, they look like they're going on a diagonal and they don't like a, they don't look like a checkerboard or a chessboard, which would definitely draw your eye and it would look a lot more artificial than if it was just done diagonally. But now just wants me to continue doing like the one stitch. And then I do that same stitch I've been doing like that. And we're just, I mean, in the past I ignored the do board. It was for the bottom part of this, yeah. It's for the bottom part of this. When this challenge is over, I'm going to look up that phrase. <laughs> when I'm no longer relying on just my senses to understand that book, I'm gonna look up that phrase to see, was I missing something? Like I did, I did end up asking my dad today, like with the French crochet one, I was saying like, hey, what does menton mean? What does menton mean? Turns out uh, menton, is chin. <laughs> so. Not snout like I was thinking. So I mean, snout would be up here. Chin is right here. Not far off. I'm on the right side of the face for that. Anyway, after this part, it's literally just more the same until the very end. So I'm gonna come back when the body is like relatively done. I finished the body. Turned out really nice. You'll see it's got all the bumpies. It's gonna be like a nice texture. I just gotta sew it together. And I finished the two ears and I think I figured out how they're gonna come together to go on our little ram here. Uh, I think this is where I'm gonna end this part of the video, <laughs> or at least end this segment of making the ram. I'm gonna start with the head next time. And our little ram here is taking a little bit more attention than I was expecting him for take, expecting for him to take, but hey, if he wants attention, he'll get attention. That That's what's going to happen here. So uh, that was today's entertainment. Have a nice day. Au revoir.